Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a very easy, achievable design for anyone that does nails. I promise you, you will be able to recreate this design, so make sure you guys give it a go. We're gonna start by prepping my practice hand. This is the Vita Bella practice hand in the Tone V4. It is one of my favorite skin tones. I absolutely adore this skin tone. We are going to be using the easy prep system. So if you guys are new to my channel or just did not know, I recently launched my own silicone practice hand. We've been struggling to keep it in stock. However, we will be restocking very, very soon. So make sure you guys check it out if you guys are interested. But we're going to start off by just prepping her with our easy prep system we are going to be removing the existing design very easily just using the cuticle pusher and kind of lifting them up very very carefully and i'm taking our easy tape and i'm going to be placing that on the natural nail of the practice hand and i'm just cutting off little portions so that they fit nicely on that natural nail and I'm just using some stork scissors for that. And then we're gonna be removing that white back to that tape and applying new tips. So what I like to do is take our Vita Bella tips for the practice hand and slide them in backwards with the shape in towards the pocket of the nail and they fit perfectly as a natural nail. So we're just gonna be using that for easy prep and we're gonna get right into the video. I'm gonna be going ahead and attaching the tips to my practice hand. I am actually using these tips from Amazon. So if you guys have not tried these out, definitely recommend them. They're very, very long square tips, but they don't have a C-curve to them. So I'm definitely really excited about that. I've been using them a lot on my channel and on my clients. So definitely recommend these if you guys are interested in non-C-curve tips. I will leave them linked down below in the description box. But I'm just taking my Young Nails brush on glue and applying a very small amount to them and attaching them to my practice hand. And I'm gonna be taking my nail tip cutters and just lightly trimming these nails. I still want a very long uh, design so we're gonna be leaving the length pretty long but I'm still trimming them just very very lightly because they are freaking long these tips are definitely extra extra long tips I'm quickly taking my hand file and just filing the sides. I just want to make sure that everything is nice and flush to the natural nail this is important you want the tip to fit perfectly not too big and not too small so I'm just making sure that I am making them nice and flush so that if it was on a client they wouldn't get any lifting or any discomfort I did want to give a quick shout out to profiles backstage for sponsoring today's video so a huge shout out and a huge thank you to them if you did not already know I absolutely adore all of their products I use them all the time on my channel so make sure you guys check out their website and did want to let you guys know very quickly that you do not need a license to shop their website. It does ask for one, but you do not have to actually input a number in there. So just create an account and you'll be able to shop their website. We're going to quickly get started by doing a very deep French design. I am using their nude acrylic for this. This is from their cover collection. I talk about their acrylics quite often on my channel as well. Their cover acrylics are amazing. They do have beginner kits on their website available and I always recommend that one to any beginner nail tech because it comes with everything that you need and their products really are really good quality so you'll be able to get started doing nails without having to spend too much money. So definitely recommend that as well. We're gonna be getting started by doing this very deep French and I'm basically doing the reverse method. So we start at the smile line and work our way up to the cuticle and then infill the rest of the nail. But I'm just doing it very, very deep. So we're going to be kind of envisioning a long almond design. And that's basically what I'm going off of. If you have a very good imagination, this would be a really good thing to kind of use when trying to create that perfect smile line. Now the consistency of this acrylic also helps a lot when creating a smile line, so definitely recommend it for that. 
but I'm just very quickly and easily kind of just building it up wherever I need to and I was able to easily just move that acrylic wherever I needed it to go as well. Now we're going to be doing a lime green design for today's nails as you guys can tell from the thumbnail but I'm starting off with their neon collection the color green as you guys can see it is such a pretty green. I feel like a lot of the time neon greens are more yellow but this one is definitely a very bright and vibrant green which I absolutely love. We're just tucking that in on the bottom of the smile line and kind of infilling it and then I am also cleaning up any green that I may have gotten on the nude portion. Once I'm content with that, I'm going to go in and actually ombre a lighter bright green that they also have on their website. This one is the yellow green from their Glow Collection. And I'm just taking a little bit of that and you can tell how easily they blend together. I am obsessed with both of these greens. Definitely recommend them. They're super, super opaque as well, which I absolutely adore when it comes to colored acrylic. But they're also very blendable, which just is another plus when it comes to favorite products in my books now we're going to be going in with that same nude color and i'm going to be applying that on the middle finger and the ring finger as well my basic acrylic application and you can tell how easily i'm working with this product so we're just starting off with a medium-sized bead right in the middle section and i'm bringing it down that's going to be basically my base thickness for that tip and then i'm just going to build it up as i go towards the cuticle area so my second bead goes right above that and then I'm just very carefully tucking in the sides, blending it out nicely to the existing acrylic. And I did have like a little bit of a lint kind of thing going on so I just went ahead and took it off. And then we're going to be taking another bead, working our way towards the cuticle area. Always remember to hold your finger downward. That's going to help make the acrylic flow down. Remember we want it to flow down instead of into the cuticle area. I'm just holding it down and then blending it, tucking in those sides and then once you get to the cuticle area you want to really really hold the finger downward and I just start kind of pushing it up but making sure that I'm holding it down so gravity is going to help you definitely get that perfect cuticle area. I know a lot of people struggle with that so make sure you are always 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 holding the finger downward. So you'll notice me kind of grab it and really pull it down that way. It goes down how many times can I say down <laughs> but it is really really important so that that product does not overflow the cuticle area once that product overflows the cuticle area you can have a possibility that there will be lifting because even though you think you clean it up all the way sometimes there's always like a very thin layer still in that area which will ultimately cause lifting so always make sure that you focus on that Now for the pinky nail, I found the snake skin, which was pretty much the inspiration for today's design. And it is also from Profiles Backstage. If you guys did not know, they offer a bunch of nail art products, which I absolutely love because they are very, very affordable. This is one of the products that I had seen and it comes in a ton of different colors. So I grabbed every single color that was available. So I ended up choosing this green one, obviously, as you guys can see. But they're actually the water slides. I think they're called like sliders or something like that on their website. So they're basically like little tattoos. I grabbed a cup of water, I submerged it, and I was actually supposed to leave it in there per one of my coworkers' uh, comments. But I went ahead and just peeled it off. It worked just fine. 
I really, really like. I've never worked with these, but I really, really like the fact that they are super thin. So I kind of put it on the nail to see how opaque the design was and I instantly became obsessed. It's like a perfect match to the acrylic that I chose. So I'm very excited about that. But I'm going to make sure that I dry it off fully and I'm actually going to be placing a base coat onto the tip of the nail. I'm going to essentially encapsulate this decal or I guess I should say the tattoo slider thing. <laughs> And I'm going to be placing a base coat so that it helps kind of stick to it so that it doesn't wiggle around. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. And I'm using the Flash Cure Little Light from Profiles as well. I'm going to place it on there and then kind of just press it down. And it worked perfectly. This did not move at all. Like I said, it's very, very thin. So that helps a lot as well. Especially when you're trying to encapsulate something, the more thin it is, the easier it's going to lay flat against the surface that you're applying it on. So now I'm just taking scissors and cutting the excess off. You want to make sure that you fully remove the excess. Otherwise, there can be a chance that there might be a little bit of lifting underneath there and you definitely don't want that. So I tried to cut it as short as possible. If you can cut it like maybe a smidge shorter than the actual tip, that would actually help as well. But I just made sure that I cut it um, as close as possible and then the tip as well now key for this not to disintegrate once you go in with your monomer you want to place a top coat over it here i'm taking just a shiny top coat from profiles backstage and i'm adding a thin layer of that we're going to cure it very quickly and you can see here that i'm doing that with a little flash cure light as well and then we're going to be able to go in with our acrylic without worrying about the design just melting right off. If you guys have tried to encapsulate decals, stickers, or anything like that, they will disintegrate with the monomer. So this kind of prevents all of that from happening. Now we're going to be going in with that same nude color and I'm going to be doing another French nail on this one. So this time it's going to be a little bit different. You will notice that I kind of applied that sticker just nice and blunt. I didn't try to cut it out into no specific smile line. I'm just making my life a little bit easier. So I'm going over the top of that decal with the nude and creating that almond long smile line that I am trying to achieve. And I just simply put the bead and I start tucking it in, moving it a little bit. And I just keep doing that until I'm content with the shape of it. And then that's when I'm going to focus on the rest of the nail up towards that cuticle area. But as you can see, that acrylic covered the decal nicely, um, effortlessly. It does not show through at all. So I didn't have to worry about specifically cutting it out into the smile line that I wanted. Now we are going to be encapsulating this nail because clearly it doesn't have any acrylic at the tip. I'm going to be applying clear acrylic from Profiles Backstage. And I'm just very quickly going to make sure that I fully cover that decal and then I'm going to focus on the thickness of the nail. So I just add a small amount and then I'm going to work my way just to add that thickness that I would like for that specific nail. <laughs>
Now, once everything is nice and dry, we're gonna go in and file. For this step, I do have my e-file at about 12,000 RPMs and I am using a very fine safety bit. So I wanna make sure that I'm using light pressure when I am filing. I'm just trying to smooth everything out nicely. And I don't have to do too much work because I do try to apply my acrylic nice and neat. So this is just very minimal filing that I'm doing on all of the surface of every nail. Now I'm going to be going in with the hand file and just filing the sides and then I'm going to be flipping the hand around also to look at the nails from the client's perspective just to square off that tip. That's just my personal preference. I feel like I'm able to really get that crisp shape if I flip it around instead of looking at it from this angle. So make sure you guys try that out if you're struggling with getting a perfect squared tip. I always, always try to recommend that type of process. Now, surprise, surprise, I actually didn't forget to put top coat before I went in with my nail art. Typically, I always forget, so not this time, you guys. We're gonna be taking the matte top coat from Profiles Backstage, and I'm just gonna be adding that to the middle finger and the ring finger because that's where I'm gonna be doing some 3D nail art. So I wanna make sure that I apply that and I don't have to worry about top coating later. So I'm gonna be applying a thin layer of that, placing it in the light for a full 60 seconds, and then we're gonna be taking some of that green acrylic and we're gonna be doing a very simple, easy to recreate snake. So I know doing 3D nail art can be very, very terrifying, but I'm here to tell you that as soon as you get the gist of it, everything is super, super easy. And I feel like when you are starting off, this is probably a really good design to kind of just try out and test it because it is very, very simple. So if you're able to really manipulate the acrylic to go in the direction that you want, you will be golden. Very, very important, first of all, is going to be a really good brush. This 3D nail art brush that I am using here, I absolutely love and I've gotten tons of positive feedback from other nail techs as well that they really like this one and this is their favorite. So definitely recommend purchasing a good 3D brush that you are comfortable using. And again, this one will be linked down below, so make sure you guys try it out if you haven't already. 
Another very important thing to do is choose an acrylic that is going to work to your advantage. You want a very blendable, very opaque acrylic. And as you can see here, I'm not having any issues with it. It's super, super opaque, very, very vibrant. And because I mentioned earlier, it's very blendable. That is basically what you're going to want. Another thing to note is that you want to work with a slightly wetter bead than you typically would. So with acrylic, you want it to stay nice and put, but when you're doing 3D, you want it to stay nice and put, but you also want it to move wherever you want it to move and you want to be able to blend it out with any more acrylic that you're about to put on there. So a slightly wetter bead is going to definitely help you in that aspect. So what I like to do is just kind of work little by little and you can see that I'm still having enough time to uh, move around the first bead that I placed on there and blend it out to the second little bead that I'm applying. So as you can see, I'm just moving the acrylic with the tip of my brush into the area that I want it to move. And then I try to leave the area where I'm going to connect another bead to slightly thinner so that it blends a little bit more seamless, if that makes sense. So I'm basically just kind of using like a scratching motion when it comes to cleaning up any little areas. So if the bead starts to kind of move a little bit or spread out a little bit too much, I just kind of scratch at the area and that's gonna help it move a little bit quicker. And as you can see, I'm just kind of just working my way around, moving it to where I want it to move and it's doing just that. And then I'm going to uh, add a little bit more and as you can see it's nice and wet so I'm basically just using like a dabbing motion and adding it to the rest of the acrylic that's already there and you see that I still have a little bit of time to move the other acrylic if I need to so if the shape isn't as perfect as I want it to be I'm very easily able to move that around We're gonna be going back in and doing the little head. So I'm just adding a little bit of acrylic to kind of bring it out a little bit more. This is gonna give me a good wet surface to blend out the head to the body of it. And then I'm gonna get another bead and apply it. And we're pretty much gonna do like an arrowhead type of shape. So I'm still kind of blending that out very, very lightly. So now goes the head. We're gonna get a slightly bigger, rounder bead. I'm going to quickly blend it into the body and then just very quickly uh, bring it out into like a slight almond arrowhead sort of shape. And then boom, you have your little snake. Super, super simple. It might seem a little bit terrifying to do, but I promise you, try it out and you should be good to go. I think it came out slightly perfect. I felt like I needed a little bit extra oomph, so we're gonna be adding some little chrome flakes that are also from Profiles Backstage. I absolutely love all of their chrome flakes, so definitely recommend them. This one is called Serpent, and they are freaking beautiful. It has like a slight bluish tint to it, but very, very green, so I really, really like the contrast that it's giving. I think it looks adorable. So we're just gonna be adding a little bit of monomer on the surface and then adding those flakes over top so that it adheres and then we're gonna be top coating of course. I'm just taking some top coat and just layering it on over top of those little flakes. And then of course you wanna cure it in the light for a full 60 seconds. This is for my day one. Now at this point I felt like I needed a little extra something on those two nails. I felt like it was just a little too naked for me. 
So we're gonna be taking the gel melt from Profiles Backstage and we're gonna be adding that and just very quickly adding like a very simple, easy to do snake skin type of design, mimicking the one that's on the pinky. So for that, I actually took the liners, the neon green one and the regular green, mixed it together to get a better match green for the set. And then just adding it over top of the wet gel melt and then we're gonna be curing it in the light. Once we're out of the light, I'm adding top coat and I'm also going to be doing the matte top coat because we want it to all blend together. And since I had already done the background matte, we're gonna go ahead and stick with that. And then for my last cure, I always try to leave it in the light for two rounds. So I do two full minutes of cure time just to make sure that all the layers are fully cured. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Please tag me in any recreations. I would love to see it in pink. If you guys do this design in pink, please tag me. I would love to see. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, uh, show